The title of my presentation is Money and the Networks. So let me start with the question. Uh, what is money? Is money a network? No, it's not. Money is just a networking instrument. It is material for making links between nodes. Who are nodes? We are the nodes. We entities, private entities, public entities, legal entities, physical entities. So uh, money is just the material for making immaterial connection between nodes. And this is some kind of controversy. Money is a catalyst for socioeconomic communication. That's absolutely true. Money is great invention that enabled us uh, to develop, that enabled us to communicate. Money enabled uh, division of labor. Money enabled specialization. Money enabled transaction costs diminishing. So money is great invention, one of the greatest invention of the mankind. Uh, money is a social construct, definitely, yes, linking all kind of economic agents. And uh, networking function of money is crucial because edges in economics are not permanent. And the dynamics of money creation dissipation is related with the uh, temporary uh, character of economic transactions. Uh, Nodes with more money can make more links. They have higher economic potential. Richer can make more economic links. Less money, less potential, so less ability to create economic edges. When we speak about uh, money, we should always mention two important issues. Quality of money and quantity of money. Quality of money in uh, commodity standard is a more or less trivial issue. It is related with the quality of commodity that serves as a money, quality of metal or gold. Uh, quality of money in fiat money standard is determined by our willingness to accept it as a money. So our willingness, our trust in something is unique. This is important. Uh, it's also worth mentioning something that is called chartalism, that uh, something that uh, is very important for money is that it can serve as a way of paying taxes, as a legal tender to pay taxes. If you want to make something money, you should easily make it money by allowing people to pay taxes by this special commodity, by this special thing. So tax paying is closely related with money, with monetary issues. Value of money has always been founded on the productive capacity of economy, uh, never on quality of money, but not only on productive capacity of economy. We in Dubrovnik have a long history of monetary production here from 13th century to uh, the beginning of 19th century. Dubrovnik coins were very popular in the region. They can be found from Constantinople to Baltic republics. Dubrovnik Mint was active in producing uh, coins for Polish kings in 17th century, in 16th century. So uh, why Dubrovnik coins were so popular? There were alternative coins in many parts of this region. Why? Because there was a trust in Dubrovnik Republic. There was a general trust in this local place with not so abundant economy, with abundant population. No, but there was a kind of a very important When we speak about quantity of money, we have a problem of money supply. Now we have two big uh, schools, two big approaches. One is exogenous money supply. This is classical theory that can be found in most of the textbooks. And there is another approach towards money supply. This is endogenous money supply theory, mostly found in post-Keynesian textbooks. I don't want to be too technical uh, because economists know this story and uh, those who are not economists are not particularly interested in this uh, story, so I'm going to skip the story. This is typical uh, uh, textbook story. 
that money supply is determined by the central bank. Central bank has the ability to regulate uh, so-called uh, money base or high-powered money, uh, printing cash and demanding certain level of required reserves. So central bank creates money, so-called M1 aggregate, and, uh, using uh, some uh, so-called um, monetary multiplier. And there is a typical monetarist rule saying uh, that uh, if we want to have uh, stable prices, we must have supply of money adequate to real GDP growth. If we have too much money, we will have prices going up. If we have not enough money compared to the real GDP growth, we will have deflation and other things. And this is how the story is explained in the textbooks. And I would like to respond to Mariana's question um, about uh, Frank Dixon's uh, presentation. I fully support his view. And the way forward is just to change economics textbooks, because this approach should have its place in the textbook. As long as we teach our students in this manner, just forget the whole story about monetary reform. Nowadays, more and more economists are uh, more inclined on endogenous money theory, saying the behavior of uh, agents can change money supply. Behavior of banks, behavior of non-banking institutions will change, and it changes money supply. High interest rates simply, let, simply lead to more credit money Banks are pushed to a uh, decreased level of excess reserves and they create more and more money. And there are two branches in this school, so-called accommodationalist and structuralist. So this is a story about non-neutral money compared to the monetary story with neutral money. But there is something that I want to stress, money controversy. Money supply is crucial for price stability. Whenever uh, there are only nominal effects on prices or there are real effects on excessive money expansion should and may cause general price instability therefore any attempt of alternative currency introduction like energy currency like earth currency carbon currency or river hour something comparable to what our colleagues from ukraine recently mentioned uh, may end in price hikes. We should be aware of that. Alternative money supply can increase the amount of money and it may have inflationary effects. However, as long as alternative money supply is negligible compared to the official money supply, effects on prices will be minimal and can be practically neglected. Why is it so? There is a problem in dual nature of money. Money has two basic but contrasted uh, functions. Money is unit of account on one side and medium of exchange on another side. So we have two contrasted functions. And this is reason why money is so mythological, because there is kind of internal controversy in money. As a unit of account, money is a way of expressing value of everything through the prices. Not necessarily, not necessarily it is connected with real transactions. So if something costs $2, it will cost $2. Um, am I going to buy it or not? It will always be $2. Probably someone else is going to buy it. Uh, it exists as a notion of a value. Unit of account exists as a notion of value. It serves as an idea, but it can be easily compromised. Therefore, the amount of money... Uh, um, pro production um, is crucial for meeting the demand of money and all other goods. On the other side, money as a medium of exchange is a way of making edges between economic nodes. It enables economic activity between uh, nodes. It enables transfer of wealth in space and in time. And it cannot exist without real economic transactions. If I can buy this with that, then that is it. If I cannot buy this with that, that's not fine. So if we want to have medium of exchange, then real transactions are necessary. Uh, it increases the need for social and economic networking, this function of medium of exchange. And it can be produced in amounts that may enable credit and investments. 
But if the investments are unsuccessful, money can create financial instability. As Hyman Minsky said in his famous article about financial instability. <coughs> private money, is it a good solution to impose private money? There are many ideas about private money production. I would like to mention one of the one of the famous the papers, books by Hayek in the uh, late 70s. Uh, uh, he put forward a proposal for issuing private monies that are going to flu fluctuate uh, competing with each other. Let's mark this side. But his idea was heavily criticized even by his followers. There is another interesting idea by Leland Jaeger from uh, 1984. Uh, he put forward the idea of separation of the unit of account from medium of exchange. Government should define money unit like it defines units of weight and uh, length. Unit of account should be free of being supply demand determined. The definition of unit of account should be in terms of a bundle of stable commodities, but there is a problem. How to find those stable commodities? What are stable commodities? In short term, medium term, long term. And uh, Leland Jaeger also uh, proposed that people would make payments writing checks denominated in unit of account on their holdings of shares of stocks in banks and mutual funds. These shares would have market-defined flexible prices. So, this is an idea without central bank. And there is a problem with this, because when we, when we don't have central bank, we don't have a lender of last resort. I also would like to uh, turn your attention to a very good article by Benesch and Kumhoff. Uh, is anybody familiar with the article? This is an article from uh, International Monetary Fund uh, working paper from, uh, yeah, from uh, 2012. And I don't want to go into the details, but this um, article is uh, trying to um, analyze ideas of Irving Fisher from uh, 1936, uh, ideas from Henry Simmons from Chicago, uh, those ideas were ideas of separation between money and credit functions of banking system. Actually, uh, requiring 100% re reserve on banking deposits. And uh, Benesch and Kumhoff used the general equilibrium model to analyze these ideas in modern uh, situation. Sure. Some questions remain to be answered. First of all, how to determine networking needs? Are we the nuts in the network uh, competent for it? <coughs> how to demonopolize central bank functions? Or is it good to de demonopolize central bank? Should central bank stay as a monopoly against all other monopolies? Uh, is it a natural monopoly? Maybe. How to efficiently control money supply if we want to make money for the people and by the people? How to separate, how to separate <coughs> money from credit? Is the Chicago plan an option? Is 100% reserve bank, bank de deposits a good option? What about uh, new bank credits only from uh, earnings or borrowings from non-banks? How to limit financial speculations without hindering market functions? How to determine interest rates is no interest economy possible at all, or is it just in a utopia? And finally, how to tackle inequality problem, problem of distribution with monetary tools? Is it possible, and how is it possible at all to solve inequality problems with monetary policy? This is, that's all.